Hello everyone. In this video, I will explain spread spectrum technology. So before going for spread spectrum, let's see what's the problem with the conventional wireless communication. So uh, in conventional wireless communication, a single frequency used for transmission. Now what's the problem with sig signal frequency transmission is uh, it's very easy to intercept. Like if a person is sending his signal on a particular frequency, uh, another person, the, uh, that person only thing has to do is to tune up his radio and try all the frequency. And when that another person will tune up his radio for that particular frequency, the another person will start getting all their communication. So it's very easy to intercept. So for example, whenever we want to listen radio we know okay that radio frequency is 93.5 so we will tune up our radio to that frequency and our radio will start getting all the signals so these are the problems with the conventional wireless communication the first one is the interference so interference occurred when another signal is also transmitted nearby that frequency so if we are using uh, a constant frequency and if there are a interference that interference will be for uh, for the entire duration of the communication the second problem is the interception which we have already discussed and uh, it's very easy to intercept because uh, only a single constant frequency is in use so if a confidential information has to be sent in that case this conventional wireless communication is not the good option so spread spectrum so spread spectrum uh, why the name is spread so actually the signal is spread over the channel bandwidth so uh, the bandwidth of transmitted signal is determined by the masses to be transmitted and by the additional signal known as spreading code so this code we will see in this lecture so this is spread spectrum uh, this is the one of the example in which sender is using multiple frequency for sending sending his data so when multiple frequency are in use it's very easy to intercept because uh, some part of the communication is sent to another frequency some part is sent to another frequency so it's very hard to find out their complete communication it's very hard to intercept so these are the advantages of the spread spectrum technology first one is the reduce interference why because we now we are not using constant frequency so if uh, there is a interference uh, with one frequency which we are using so that interference will be only for the duration for which we are using that frequency as soon as there will be a switching to another frequency that interference will be over and the another one is the immunity to jamming so in order to in order to jam a communication communication frequency has to be known but in uh, spread spectrum technology the example we have seen multiple frequency are in use and uh, that, that's why it's making very hard for jamming so we are going to discuss these two spread spectrum techniques frequency hoping is spread spectrum and direct sequence spread spectrum so frequency hoping is spread spectrum in this technique uh, entire bandwidth is divided into smaller channels so the all uh, the number of channels are 79 now now whenever a sender wants to send his data that sender will decide a frequency sequence and let's say that sender has selected this frequency so that sender will transmit its message on this frequency only for a particular time and that time is known as your hoping time or dwell time so when uh, that time is over sender will switch to the another frequency and then sender will transmit its message 
so when this time is over again it will switch to the another frequency so there will be switching between the frequency that's why the name given frequency popping spread spectrum so now here sender is not using a single frequency for transmitting data and uh, sender transmit its data on a particular frequency for only 6 to 5 microseconds which is our hoping time different different sender can use different different frequency sequences so uh, frequency of a carrier is periodically modified following a specified sequence of frequency so this concept uh, what is the meaning of this statement i will show in the next slide and the, that sequence is actually known as spreading code and the amount of time spent on each frequency or hope is known as dwell time which we have seen in the previous slide as hoping time so following frequency hoping sequence message is modulated so let's see fhss with the help of example let's say we are having eight frequency channel and a sender a wants to send some data and a has selected this sequence f1 f5 f3 and f8 so what a will do a will transmit its signal uh, first a will modulate its message with the frequency f1 and it will send the data for one dwell time on f1 frequency now once that dwell time is completed now a is is going to modulate its data with frequency f5 and send that data so the next frequency going to be used is f5 and so on the next one f3 and f8 so if you can see sender is not sending its data on a constant frequency so every frequency is uh, getting used only for a particular amount of time known as dwell time so uh, in order to receive this signal properly receiver has to know this sequence so in case if receiver also having this sequence receiver will receive on f1 frequency for one dwell time then receiver will change to f5 then f3 and then f8 so this thing we have already discuss so next technique is the direct sequence spread spectrum so in this technique every user gets a code and that code is actually used to encode the signal uh, how this code is used this code is actually multiplied with the original message and uh, the resultant message is then transmitted receiver when receive that encoded message receiver will also the same code receiver will multiply the same code with the received message and it will retrieve the original message now let's see the example so uh, the code is actually known as chipping code and uh, the multiplying when the message is multiplied with the code that process is known as chipping so uh, for our example we are going to represent 0 with minus 1 so uh, if this is the code if this is the spreading code 100101 so this will be equivalent to 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 minus 1 1 and let's say this is the code for one user and let's say this is the original data which is going to be sent 1 1 so this minus 1 is actually 0 so we are representing 0 with minus 1 and this is our high bandwidth spreading code which we have seen in the previous slide so how this encoding will take place this one will be multiplied with this one so this one will be multiplied with the corresponding value which is 1 so we will get 1 these minus 1 will be multiplied with 1 we will get 3 minus 1 and so on 
so for every bit this code will be multiplied and we will get this signal so if you can see uh, our actual message is this one but this message is encoded in something else so this is the encoded message now let's say receiver received this message now what receiver will do receiver will multiply this message with the same code so when one multiplied with one we will get one minus one multiplied with minus one we will get one so what we will get is we will get this kind of signal and this signal will be taken as this one so this is the original signal which a receiver has successfully decoded so this is dsss this is also known as cdma code division multiple access thank you very much for watching